Hey, everybody. Hi, uh, let's get started, I guess. I, uh, I moved to Toronto recently, and uh, everyone's like, you should get a bicycle because it's faster than a car because all the traffic, and it's cheaper, and you like get in like, really awesome shape. And I was like, cool, and I did that, and it worked out great. It was great uh, until in November when I fell off and broke both of my arms. I'm not even just saying, like, I actually broke both my arms at the same time. Like, all of a sudden, I had no arms. <laughs> Let me tell you something, arms are hugely, hugely underrated. Like, you need those like, on a day-to-day -day basis. They come in pretty big, so... Because they are not good... They're, they're good at fixing you at the hospital, but they're not good at telling you how to live your life without any arms. <laughs> she was like, you have two slings now. It's gonna be rough out there, so... I was like, lady, I put on socks this morning with arms. What's our exit plan for these socks? What are we... I'm just gonna... You know? I was just staring at the wall in the emergency room, just like wondering like, to myself, like, how long is it that you have to date somebody before you can ask them to wipe your own butthole? Like, how long is that? How long is that? No. It's not five months, I learned that. I learned that that day, that is not enough time, you know, for it to be okay the next day to look at each other's eyes. You can't do that. You're going to have to want to wait a longer amount of time, you know? Yeah. Is this your significant other right here? Yeah? And, and how long have you guys been together? Three years. Three years, okay, great. Great, great. Well, congratulations. Would you, would you wipe him? Would you? No. I was really pushing it with five months, everybody, apparently. It is longer than three years, also. So. It's good. And I, uh, when I first moved there, I had to move into a, a very small apartment I moved into a 250 square foot apartment. Yeah. And if you don't understand what square footage means, you know, because you're, you're looking at me like, 250? Good for you, young man. If you don't understand how to calculate square footage, here's an example. My microwave was my bedroom clock. Every night before I went to bed, I just set my alarm for eight hours. You know, on high. So, just... It's very calming. It was, you know. It was. It's quite a life I've laid out for myself. I was uh, in the st traveling in the States, you know. And, and when they find out that you're from Canada, they always, they always ask me the same question. I don't know if you guys experience this, they're always like, oh, you're from Canada? Is free healthcare good? Is free healthcare good? I'm like, well, not paying for stuff is way better than paying for stuff, so. Nine times out of 10, I'd rather not pay for stuff. It's a rough estimate. It's a rough estimate, you know? Yeah, yeah. They get upset. They get upset though. They're like, well, screw you, Canadian. The only reason why you guys can afford free health care is because you don't have an army. I'm like, we do. It's like, you don't have an army. And you use army to protect you. We can invade you whenever you want to, you stupid jerk. It's like, I'm talking about health care, sir. Maybe you want to tone it down a notch. You know? Besides, that's only half true. Yes, America, they do have a gigantic army. They do. But don't worry, they could never invade us. Uh uh. No. Because they're all parts of the American public education system and they wouldn't be able to find us on a map. So. <laughs> They lace up the sleeve that we carry. They probably invade the wrong border first. Like, there's way too many taco stands here for this to be Canada. I think I have diarrhea. I'm in Mexico. You know. Better head west. You know, we got three more shots at this, and we will get them. They probably would eventually invade us, right? You know, but don't worry again, you know, they wouldn't stay. They wouldn't stay for one main reason, one main reason. 
January. <laughs> There's a nightmare in this country in January. I'm from Ottawa and we have a winter festival just so we don't kill ourselves. The big tourist attraction is in Ottawa is there's a three-mile canal that freezes over and public servants skate to work. And like, you can skate to work. And you're like, well, can, can, I, can I jog? No, you must skate. <laughs> to survive the elements, you must skate. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't sound good at all. My main problem, my main problem is, is, with winter here is that cleavage is gone, you know. <laughs> boobs are off the streets and they, you never know when they're gonna come back you know it's April they're still not back you know <laughs> it's a big part of my day it's a big part of every guy's day you know we're, we're not creepy about it it just makes us happier in the summer you know you just see something once a day across the street you're like oh I like that that's good yeah. it's, nice. it's just gone in the winter you know Maybe you do see an attractive lady, but you have no idea what she looks like. She's got eight ill-fitting jackets on, just shuffling down the street. Her neck warmers just caked in snot. You know? You're like, well, her eyelids look attractive. I guess we'll invite her inside. Roll the dice on this one, you know? See what's in this kinder surprise. Hope I get the toy. Not the puzzle. It's confusing. It is confusing. <laughs> We're less racist. We're less racist than Americans. They will, uh, they'll put racism into legislation down there. In Arizona, I don't know if you know this, they have a law uh, that if you look illegal, the police can pull you over. If you look illegal. That's the law. Look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's how I know that it's a racist law. Because you couldn't pass that law to keep Canadians out of America. You could. What do illegal Canadians look like? Well, that guy's wearing a lot of flannel. He's probably an illegal Canadian piece of crap. Well, that guy's wearing a jean jacket and jean pants. They call it the Canadian tuxedo, Stevenson. It says right here in this pamphlet, how to catch a snow Mexican. Right here. You see that? It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. How would they find us? Build a hockey rink, see who shows up. <laughs> and there'd be a test. You'd have to line all the suspects up against the wall and start pushing them individually, start shoving them. And all the Americans, they'd be like, screw you. Screw you for pushing me. Then one guy, he'd be like, sorry. It's like Canadian. <laughs> we got one, Stevenson. Okay, bye, thanks.